democracy in this province should be respected more than that. And I think it's a time for people to look at another option to build a new coalition in this province. But when I look at the council culture and I think uh, it's a dangerous path and because it opens us up to abuse, it opens us up to misinformation. Trey Humphrey here with Rebel News and typically in the province of British Columbia, if somebody was thinking, where should I vote? Provincially, if I'm a conservative, they ended up voting for the B.C. Liberals. I know the name isn't doing them any favors, which is probably why they are in the process of transitioning that name to the B.C. United. 80 percent of our members have endorsed the idea of changing the name from the B.C. Liberal Party to BC United. But it's true. That's where most of this province's conservative-minded votes went. It's thought to be a coalition of sorts. But that may have changed. You see, part of the reason a lot of people voted that way is because the BC conservatives were few and far between when it came to running candidates in elections. And they didn't have an MLA of their own for years until last week. That's right, the newly rebranded now Conservative Party of BC just gained Nechaco Lakes MLA John Rusted, who had been serving as an independent after being ousted from the so-called Conservative BC Liberals after the thought crime, or maybe I'll call it a thumb crime, of retweeting co-founder of Greenpeace and Guru when it comes to sustainable energy's tweet of Patrick Moore. Why? Because part of it said that the case for CO2 being the control knob of global temperature gets weaker every day. Ouch. Now that is sure to trigger some on the left, and it certainly seems to have triggered the head of the BC Liberals, Kevin Falcon, because he booted MLA Rustad out quickly after that on Rustad's birthday. Ouch. True story. We're going to hear from Rusted in just a moment about why he now joined the Conservative Party of BC. I caught up with him right after he did the announcement. I'm also going to ask him what he thinks his own writing, the constituents in his own writing, will think of that and what we should expect to hear or see from the party and himself. But first, if you appreciate the news that Rebel News brings you and want to be part of the people who are the backbone of Rebel News and make our news possible for for all who want the other side of the story, then please open up another tab and head to our store, revelnewsstore.com. That's where I got this fun shirt, Make Canada Great Again, in my favorite color, purple. And there's lots of other fun stuff there as well. And it supports our independent journalism. But for now, here's MLA Rusted. As an independent MLA, you can fight hard for your writing. You can try, try to get things done. But if you want to be able to see changes on a provincial level, you've got to work in a political structure like a party. And what I've noticed from the other political parties, you know, particularly the BC Liberals and the uh, and the BC NDP, is they elect people to represent the party to the riding. And I believe strongly that MLA's job should be to be the voice of the riding for a political party and for a province. The Conservative Party of British Columbia is the party that aligns with wanting to see that, wanting to see people fighting for the, you know, the average person in British Columbia. The last time they had an MLA uh, in the legislature under the old party name right. was uh, was back in 2012. Exactly. So does it concern you at all that this is a newly sort of rebranded party or you think it's just the right timing? I look at, you know, I've, I've received thousands of emails and, and messages from really across the province. And people are looking for a change. You know, political parties in British Columbia, they like to work in the shadows. They don't up front, right? They like as much secrecy as possible so they can provide spin, which is why they want to control the narrative for every MLA in terms of what they're saying. And I just think that's just wrong. You know, democracy in this province should be respected more than that. And I think it's a time for people to look at another option to build a new coalition in this province that will represent all British Columbians and have that core value of representing your riding before your party. Well, you've been serving British Columbians for a long time and you were with the BC Liberals, I guess soon to be called the BC United. And typically when people were thinking conservatives, at least in the recent years, they were sort of leaning towards that party, which is more of a coalition. 
Uh, do you think that party still has a place for conservative British Columbians? No, I do not. Uh, it's pretty clear that that party has moved, moved towards uh, trying to be woke uh, for whatever that can mean. Obviously, also people have different definitions of that. Um, but it, they just seem to want to try to pretend to be something mm -hmm. instead of standing on values. And I think, you know, a political party, particularly a party that can be a true coalition, has to be a big tent. You have to be able to bring people in from right across the political spectrum with a wide, wide variety of issues, but standing on principles, not trying to run around and get out in front of something because you think that's where people need to be to vote. And I think, quite frankly, we need more principle uh, in our politics in, in British Columbia and, quite frankly, right across this country. Well, you were in that caucus and then removed after retweeting. I always find this so crazy when people are getting canceled, for lack of better words, for a retweet, not even a statement. And that tweet uh, was from Patrick Moore, and it didn't perfectly align with the climate alarmist agenda. I did reach out to the Conservative Party of British Columbia to ask if they were at all concerned <laughs> that you may uh, do a tweet or retweet, and they said no. Know that uh, they are certainly not concerned with monitoring or or having uh, you know sort of power over what you do on Twitter or any of their other uh, politicians. How does that make you feel? And what do you make of sort of this cancel culture we're seeing, even as high as with our elected officials? I think it is extremely um, dangerous to think that this cancel culture has gone particularly through our education system, mm -hmm. our advanced education system, our researchers, our scientists, and you know, at a political level as well. There are so many people that have been prevented from being able to speak out, even people like Jordan Peterson, right? Who's yeah. obviously, you know, become, uh, you know, quite a national and international uh, star in, in terms of him being outspoken. Mm -hmm. There are groups that are trying to cancel him. And I just, you know, where are we going with politics? Where are we going as a society? We should be celebrating differences because that's who we are. We are a melding pot of people from all around this world with all kinds of different ideas, all kinds of different, you know, interests. And we should be celebrating all those differences. That's what makes Canada the solution. And, you know, so when I look at the council culture and I think, uh, it's a dangerous path and because it opens us up to abuse. It opens us up to misinformation. Uh, and I just think it's, you know, it's a shame. But that's, like I say, why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I think people need a choice. They need to be able to see principled politicians being able to stand up for values and ask people for support and earning people's support. So now that you have uh, the chains off of you sort of as an independent and in this party that at the moment is saying, you know, they're not going to be muzzling you, what is something you think that you're free to fight for British Columbians on their behalf that perhaps you would have had difficulty fighting for them in the BC Liberals Party? There's no question I would have had difficulty bringing this forward. And, and just today I was in question period asking the Minister of Health to hire back BC's healthcare heroes. Mm, yes. There is between 20, about 25, 2,600 uh, healthcare professionals that were fired. And what I'm hearing is up to 7,000 that, you know, were either fired or quit for yeah. various reasons, you know, because of mandates and because of disrespect. Every other province in the country has dropped their mandates. Every other province in the country has figured out how to manage uh, risks to keep patients safe. Yet this province is more focused on a system and not focused on patient outcomes. And you just talk to anybody in a small community like Houston or Fort St. James or even places like Kelowna or down in the lower mainland. One doctor can make a huge difference in being able to provide services. And the fact that we are not hiring back every single person we can when our healthcare system is at, in a crisis is completely unacceptable. I just find it unconscionable that that is the approach of government. So this is an issue that you know I can now stand up and fight for that I would not have been able to do as a BC Liberal. Now, we're doing this interview immediately after you've announced pretty much. Uh, so perhaps you can't fully answer this question. But what do you think your community in the Chaco Lakes, how are they going to perceive this change going from independent to this party now? Um, you know, I always promised um, and, you know, there's people in my writing that were concerned 
because my writing actually has a history of people kind of walking across the floor or becoming independent. Mm. Uh, and that's, you know, that's troubling to me. I wanted to be able to provide stability for my, uh, the people in my writing. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, when I, when I talk to the people in my writing and I tell them about, you know, how parties work, you know, in the shadows and how they're all about spin and how they want mm-hmm. to control the messaging, mm-hmm. it's not what they asked for. And, you know, I've always had a history in my writing of being outspoken. Uh, I have never, you know, shied away from that. I've stood for various, you know, principles and values, particularly things like economic development and opportunity, but of course, couched in, uh, you know, the need for balance. Um, you know, as a minister for Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation, I signed 435 agreements with First Nations across the province, mm-hmm. fighting for economic reconciliation that works hand in hand with communities across the province. And so, you know, when I tell people I'm thinking about doing this, and of course, you know, now that I've done it, I'm going to be talking about how <laughs> I have done it as opposed to thinking about doing it. Um, you know, people say, you know, you need to stand up for those values. And that's what I'm going to do. And I, it's what I've done all my life. It's the way I've approached politics. And it was the way the BC Liberals used to be. And they've changed. They don't accept things like free votes in the legislature anymore. They have censored other MLAs, you know, just recently, you know, people like Renee Merrifield or, mm-hmm. and there's, a, you know, two or three others that they have censored. And I just look at it, I think that's wrong, because as an MLA, you ask for people's trust to be their representative and their voice. You present yourself as to who you are, not some, you know, made up thing that a party has. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I know there will be some people in my writing that will be disappointed. But on the, on the flip side, I've got to be able to stand up and fight for my values. And I think that is the most important thing a politician can do. Well, and you still got a few years probably to uh, prove it to them. So thanks again for being on Rebel News. And if people want to find out more, they can check you out on Twitter or on the Conservative Party of British Columbia's website. Take care. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking again. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a game changer for conservative British Columbians? And if you would like to support our independent journalism, please head to rebelnewsstore.com.